My first camera uh, was when I was a, I had it when I was about six years old. That's a long while ago, and it was a Kodak Brownie 127, which was a, a film camera. And in those days, we had to buy film at the chemists, and there we had to go and take it to the chemist to be processed and developed. And that was my first camera. If I remember right, it was a Christmas present. I grew up in uh, Munsley on the North Norfolk coast and uh, there used to be two or three of us mates, we all had cameras and what we'd do was uh, go out and take basically pictures of each other. <laughs> there was a little bit of break uh, when I was at school because school took over everything else and then uh, when I left school it started again and uh, for my 21st birthday present uh, my wife bought me a Yashica 35W camera, which was my first 35mm camera. The uh, film was much narrower than 35mm, and uh, used to do colour prints from that, and also used to take slides. When you developed the old uh, film, you had to have, uh, well, basically they call it a dark room, so it had <laughs> the light had to be. Uh, shaded out with a curtain drawn across the window and no light whatsoever otherwise it affects the development and the print paper and yes it used to um, occupy the bathroom uh, <laughs> plenty of water there but all the chemicals were in their separate trays anyway slides and transparencies overtook everything uh, until uh, about, mm, let's say, the year 2000. Um, and I used to belong to uh, a camera club and that was a really good place to learn photography from other people and speakers and everything else. And from there we learnt how to print and develop films, uh, studio work, outside work, and it developed from there. It was at a club where one of my transparencies uh, was picked to represent the club in a competition and it actually got in and accepted and that's where um, I really started on um, salons and international photography. Around about 2000 was the time when digital started to come in. Film cameras went out of the window and there was digital. Uh, which was, in a way, much easier. Uh, no development film or taking it to the chemist to be developed. You had your own screen, you processed your own pictures. Basically, it's much cheaper. The way I approach taking a picture really hasn't changed. The thing that digital does, I find it may make you a bit lazy in that using film, you tend to try and get it right in the camera first time and that's it. With the digital camera you can just shoot 50 pictures of one scene and have a look at it and say which is the best one. Which isn't the way I go about it but it does tend to make you lazy that way. And I do try and make the digital exactly the same and then it avoids what we call post-processing which is using Photoshop on the screen. We use that to uh, delete things like dust spots on the film and things like that and making slight adjustments. But if you, do it, if you do it all in the camera first time, you don't have to bother to do that. Royal Photographic Society, East Anglian Region, uh, used to run a regional competition. And uh, when I was in the Munsley Photographic Club, there were several members and uh, we used to submit entries. What we used to enter then were slides or transparencies and it was then that I got my first acceptance which which started off, um, should we say, national and international exhibition. I do have two um, which have both done quite well in salons. Uh, one is called Refuge and the other is called The Chair and they are both black and white images. In about uh, 2009, 2010, when I'd had about uh, 3,000 images on the photo library, and it was then that I had my first 
my first sale, which is a picture of Hickling Church. My favourite landscape uh, areas are Norfolk Broads, North Norfolk and of course Scotland for mountains and locks. Um, within the landscape I do enjoy um, windmills which is a, a big thing and churches. Uh, I've got quite a large collection of Norfolk churches uh, which I, I think they're wonderful architecturally. Right we've uh arrived this morning at Howe Hill at Ludham um, to photograph a typical Norfolk windmill and this is called Turf Fen Mill on the River Ant. Um, I've had to look to try and get the best angle to photograph it from. Uh, there's quite a bit of boot traffic so uh, we'll try and get between the boot traffic. Um, I found uh, it should be quite good once the uh, swash from the boots dies down, that we've got a bit of a reflection. Um, and I'll try and do a large picture of the mill uh, to more or less fill the frame, plus with the reflection. And we decided, or at least I've decided to go to uh, portrait mode. Another thing I always use is a cable release. Uh, this just stops uh, any, any jarring or motion while I take the picture. Um, exposure, um, I always set my camera up to uh, a small aperture, f16, uh, so it's sharp uh, from front to back. Um, and uh, it's on autofocus. Um, I'll, I'll just take, take the shot and this is a neutral density filter. Uh, the top half is uh, two stops darker than the front so it actually darkens the sky and we will go for a, a, nice, a nice landscape on this one um, and what we'll do I'll place the the mill and the reflection this time uh, on the what they call on the position of thirds so it's a, th a third towards the end and a third up which usually provides for a, not a bad composition and the next thing to do is to check the exposure um, can't let the camera do it this time <laughs> because of the uh, the dark the dark sky it would affect the exposure overall so it's f11 at a 15th and i'd have to now switch the camera to manual lovely and uh, leave it on autofocus and it's now ready ready to take the picture here we are <laughs> 